Yeah, in this video, we'll talk about asymptotic notations. See, we have seen various algorithms, various functions and various operations on data structures. We got the time complexities in various forms. Like, we got the time complexity as 1, that is constant, and sometimes we got it as log n, and sometimes n or n log n, so on. For example, inserting an element in a queue, that is n queue or push, it was taking constant time. Searching in a binary search tree or AVL tree, it was taking log n time. Searching an element in an array or finding the maximum element in an array or a linked list, it was taking maximum order of n time. Then, n log n, this was merge sort or quick sort, best case of quick sort. Then, n square, that is matrix, or also in the graphs, the time was dependent on the matrix. This 2 power n, in trade recursion we get this one. So, 2 power n or it may be up to n power n. So, this portion, these time complexities are called as exponential time complexities. And these time complexities are called as polynomial time complexities. These are called as polynomial. So, all those time complexities, I have arranged them in the increasing order of their value. See, n square value will be greater than n log n. n log n will be greater than n or say log n is less than n, n is less than n log n for some values of n. Don't start n from 0 or 1. Don't say if I put 0 all are equal only. No, don't take that. If I take 10 they are equal. No, don't take 10 also. You take larger value, right? So the starting value of n need not be 0 or 1. It can be any starting value. But beyond that, Say, let us say 0 to infinity. So, from whichever point it is starting, from there to infinity, if someone is greater, then we say it is greater. Like, for example, I have n cube and 2 power n is greater. 2 power n is much greater than n cube. How? If I take 2, so then this is 2 cube is 8 and this is 2 square is 4. See? If n is a 2, then how come it is greater? So don't take 2. Take 10. So 10 cube is 1000. 2 power 10 is 1024. Oh, this is bigger. Okay, 11 cube you take. So this may be 1, 2, 2, 1. And this will be 2 power 11 is 2048. See, it is double of this one. So it's much bigger. So don't take small values of n, right? So from some value of n, that is greater. So we have arranged them in increasing order of their values or weightage. Now next thing. See what all the algorithms we have analyzed, we were getting the time complexities like time function, we were getting it as n. So we were calling it as order of n. Or sometime we were getting it as n square. So n square. We did not analyze the code line by line. We were writing the time complexities based on the work done. So we are directly getting these values. Now sometime when you analyze a function, suppose you got the time complexity as f of n is equals to sigma i, i takes values from 1 to n. How much this is? How much this is? This is order of n. So you should know mathematical form of this function. You should know how to simplify and get a single value for this one. So if you expand this, it will be up to order of n. Now suppose it is f of n into sigma i into 2 power i. i takes values from 1 to n. How to solve this? So if you know the mathematical expansion of the sigma, then this is nothing but 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus goes on to n. This is what? n into n plus 1 by 2. Then how much this is? n square, order of n square. This is the time function. Now suppose the time function is like this. Sigma i takes values from 1 to n, i into 2 power i. Expand this and get a single formula. It is difficult to get. We can't get exact formula. 
we have to get a approximate formula so by solving this one we get approximate so this is enough for me to explain you that if you are getting a time function in some form which cannot be simplified in terms of n directly then you cannot give the time complexity you cannot mention the time if you cannot get in this form polynomial of n exactly if you are getting approximate then if that approximation is lower value or a higher value so the result of a function in the form of a polynomial is that polynomial a lower value or a higher value it's not exact so which one you are taking so if you are taking lower value then you can say omega if you are taking upper value then you can say big O if you are taking exact value then we say theta these are the notations these notations are lower bound upper bound these notations are lower bound upper bound and tight bound so lower bound is omega upper bound is we go tight bound is theta so we have these three notations use these are useful in the situations when you cannot get the exact polynomial for our formula for a function then you can go for big o now if you are not interested in analyzing this one at most this will be n into 2 power n yes you can say that is at most n into 2 power n upper bound big o notation and omega so ignoring this it may be 2 power n okay 2 power n omega so you are taking lower bound so when we prefer upper when we go for lower and upper bound when you cannot try and tight bound if you say no i can solve this by using integration and limits on integration by using integration by parts i can get the exact value if you say that if you say that then you can go for theta suppose the theta is n into 2 power n so this is your exact function so when you have exact function you use theta if you don't know if you are not sure and you are taking upper bound say big o so mostly we use big o to say that at most see whenever you are talking about any expenses or the time we say at most this much at most this much so we want to know the idea that is the upper limit so what is the upper bound if you know the upper bound then we can do that work see suppose i want to buy a mobile phone if you say 2000 indian rupees this minimum amount 1 lakh mini 1 lakh indian rupees it's a maximum amount so when you want to know how much is the cost of any mobile phone which one you are interested in knowing at most right at most not beyond 1 lakh okay fine so unless you can get it most of the time we prefer upper bound right so that's why we go for big o notation all right so i was not using any of these notations i was saying order of means i am not interested in notation why i was not interested in notation in all the examples we have seen in all the topics a reason i was always getting tight bond i was getting the equation the formula exact formula it was not approximate it is not approximate so rarely you come across a situation where you need approximate in algorithms it's not a common situation that analysis will give you approximate results no most of the time you get exact results that you can go for tight bond so when i was saying order of that was theta right but on the safe side mostly we say big o so in the textbooks everywhere you find it is big o the reason of using big o i'll show you see if suppose a function f of n is big o of n as well as function f of n is omega of n then we say f of n is theta of n so it means this big o of n is not just upper only equal or upper bound omega is equal or lower bound when you got theta you can also use big o because big o represents equal or upper so that's why 
big O is commonly used. So now you can convert all of them, all the time complexes that we got in the form of theta or big O that is upon your requirement, how you need it. And one last thing, see these are the known time complexities, we understand how the algorithm may be working. If you got a formula, analytical result in some other form, which you cannot produce in this form, then you will select any one of these, that is upper bound or lower bound. If it can be shown like this, then you can go for tight bound. So that's all about asymptotic notations.